Africa is the world's new geopolitical battleground. It's a vast continent which has not entirely been conquered by any superpower yet. Conquests these days don't work the traditional way. It's more about diplomacy and influence. The big powers of the world are all trying to get ahead of each other in the race to win over Africa. In Africa, the world's biggest powers are playing a game, and Africa is keeping all its options open. Why is Africa suddenly taking center stage for countries like the United States, Russia, China, and players in Europe? Why is a continent which has been ignored for decades suddenly becoming a priority? You see, Africa is up for grabs. It's not entirely pro-US. It's not completely on China's side either, and it has not committed itself entirely to Russia. This is Sanbir Singh Ranhotra and you're watching First Post. Africa is home to the world's youngest and fastest growing population. About 60% of Africa's population is under 25, and the young population is set to grow to 80% by 2050. So, Africa's consumer market is expanding fast, and it will boom in the coming years. A young and fast-growing population also means that the labor force across the continent is growing. That makes Africa an attractive business destination. The continent has 40% of the world's gold. and up to 90% of its chromium and platinum the largest reserves of cobalt platinum and uranium are in africa in totality africa is home to 30% of the world's mineral reserves the biden administration has been criticized for being inattentive to africa so it is no surprise that the usa's first post covid diplomatic extravaganza was aimed at africa this week 49 African leaders gathered in Washington to attend the second US Africa summit held after a gap of 8 years. The United States is all in on Africa, Joe Biden told these African leaders. Biden also backed the idea of a permanent African Union role in the G20 and said he was planning to visit sub-Saharan Africa soon. That will be a first by a US president since 2015. Biden had earlier supported the idea of an African permanent seat on the UN Security Council. The US has also committed around 55 billion dollars to Africa over the next 3 years. Obviously, the US is trying to court Africa. And why is that? You see, the US is actually a late comer to the African party. Countries like China and Russia have been in Africa for years now. Over the past few years, China has built strong relations with governments and ruling elites in a host of African nations. It has rolled out its Belt and Road Initiative in Africa on a large scale. Washington has characterized Chinese lending as part of the BRI as a predatory scheme to debt trap African nations. Here are some interesting facts about the China-Africa relationship. China has fully funded the 200 million dollar African Union headquarters in Ethiopia's Addis Ababa. China has invested in the Mombasa Nairobi rail link in Kenya and has already delivered on railway projects in Sudan. China has been accused of severely debt trapping Kenya with the railway link to the extent that Kenya demanded for the terms of the project to be renegotiated. China accounts for 67% of Kenya's external debt. China has a military hardware market in Ethiopia and has built over 80 infrastructural projects in Somalia including hospitals, roads, schools and stadiums in Djibouti 14 infrastructural projects are funded by China Ethiopia is one of the top 5 African recipients of Chinese investments and also has a debt of almost 14 billion dollars in 2022 China promised to provide 15.7 million dollars in assistance to Eritrea China's first and only military base outside its mainland is in Djibouti The US has speculated that China wishes to build another military base in Kenya and Tanzania. That will increase its military presence in the region and bring Chinese forces near to the USA's east coast. Let's talk about Russia now. Just after Russia invaded Ukraine, Moscow had taken several steps to strengthen ties with Africa. This included Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov's tour of Africa, Putin's meeting with African Union President Macky Sall, and a number of Russia Africa discussions. In fact, Russia is now preparing a second Russia African summit. Russia's work in Africa began a decade ago, just when Vladimir Putin started asserting himself globally. 
Russia has extremely strong ties with Sudan, Mali, and the Central African Republic. According to a study by the Tony Blair Institute for Global Change, Russia may now be on the verge of acquiring naval capabilities in Sudan and Libya. France was once a major player in Africa. In recent years, it has suffered some serious military setbacks and also lost a good amount of influence. China and Russia have both eaten into the space France has lost. Now, the US wants a piece of the pie too. Will Africa choose one superpower to side with or will it go with everybody? Let us know what you think in the comments.